Bruce Buffer is not a UFC fighter. He's not the president, the matchmaker, or even a major decision maker in the promotion. Yet, he is the most important man in the company, especially when... For over two decades, Bruce Buffer's presence has marked the start of some of the greatest UFC duels. His booming voice... Live from the sold out HSBC Arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil! His contagious energy and his unique style has turned him into one of the most popular non-fighters in MMA. But none of this would have been possible without a sweet coincidence. Today we're diving deep into Bruce Buffer's story of coming up in the shadow of his legendary brother to finding his own voice and becoming his own Buffer. Born in Oklahoma and raised in Philadelphia, Buffer first came into martial arts while living in Philly. He began studying judo and eventually attained the rank of green belt. When he turned 15, Buffer relocated to Malibu, California with his family. There he formed friendships with two students of Chuck Norris, who introduced him to Tong So Do, a martial art in which he now holds a second degree black belt. In his 20s, Buffer entered the unforgiving world of kickboxing and competed for a few years before abandoning the sport due to multiple concussions. When he wasn't fighting, Buffer spent most of his time watching boxing with his father, who was an army veteran and a huge fan of boxing himself. And it was while watching a Saturday night event that Bruce discovered the only other Buffer that he had ever seen. Ring announcer Michael Buffer, who felt eerily familiar. Could it be a true coincidence? Was this Buffer also crazy for boxing? Were they distant relatives? Bruce had so many questions when he saw Michael and his father had all the answers. After six months, it all came to a head during a road trip with his old man to San Francisco in 1985. From the passenger seat, Bruce mustered the courage to ask Joe if he had any clue about this Michael Buffer character. And without giving it a second thought, Joe dropped a bombshell on Bruce. For 29 years, Bruce had no idea about Michael, and suddenly, they were brothers. Buffer grew up in the Philadelphia area before relocating to a middle-class surfing community near Malibu with his father and his mother Connie, and his older brother Brian. Neither Bruce nor Michael were aware of each other's existence, and he would have remained unaware if not for a spur-of-the-moment decision made by an army officer processing his enlistment papers in 1965. Upon seeing Michael Hubert's birth certificate, which bore the name Buffer instead, the officer decreed, you're Michael Buffer now, soldier. That's how Michael became Buffer and Bruce discovered someone who'd be his mentor for years to come. Months later, Bruce asked his father to call his estranged son and Joe Oblige by visiting a country club theater in California where Michael was called to announce some fights. Though Joe couldn't meet Michael, he sneaked in his phone number. Michael received an unexpected note from a waitress between fights. The slip of paper bore the name Joe Buffer and a phone number. Michael knew exactly who Joe was, and a few months later, he was invited over by Bruce and Joe for a family reunion. The dinner date was a memory the two brothers still cherish to this day. Bruce in particular, because as well as being a fan of Michael, he was also his blood relative, which created a profound sense of connection. It was a heartwarming evening, marked by the joy of discovering newfound family ties and the ease with which they bonded over shared experiences. Both brothers agree that the encounter felt natural, with conversations flowing effortlessly and a strong sense of camaraderie emerging between them. The reunion of sorts proved to be mutually beneficial for both Michael and Bruce, who entered his elder brother's life like the missing puzzle piece confronting him about the millions of dollars he was potentially losing by not capitalizing on his own fame and catchphrase. Taking charge of his brother's affairs, Bruce locked down the let's get ready to rumble catchphrase so tightly that only one man could use it. The catchphrase was still used in video games and otherwise, but not for free. And legend has it, Michael made a whopping $400 million thanks to Bruce's business savvy brain. Bruce made Michael a filthy rich man, and in return, Michael gave him a sense of purpose and direction. Bruce was always a fighter, he loved fighting as much as his second love, surfing. 
and it was only natural that he turned his passion into his profession. Michael reciprocated Bruce's favors by granting his younger brother his first opportunity in ring announcing. The chance came in the spur of the moment during a kickboxing event in Battle Creek, Michigan. Since Michael was busy that day, he sent Bruce in his place and though Bruce later admitted that he sucked, it was a life changing experience nevertheless. A year after Bruce made his ring announcing debut, the UFC came into being and when Michael was invited to announce the UFC 6 event, Bruce knew he had found his tribe. Michael blew the roof off with his energy at UFC 6, but his UFC career was short lived as it never quite clicked with him and his sponsors at the now defunct World Championship Wrestling drew a clear line. It was either them or the newfound MMA promotion with no guarantee of a solid future. Michael chose wrestling and Bruce convinced UFC bigwigs to give him his shot. It was tough, but the opportunities trickled in slowly. Buffer would receive occasional calls from the original owners of the UFC to announce a fight night at $750 per event, but then silence would follow for the next few months. Interestingly, Bruce's breakthrough moment had nothing to do with the UFC. A producer from Warner Bros. Studio saw one of the episodes he had announced and approached him. The producer mentioned that the NBC sitcom Friends, then in its third season, wanted to feature an episode about the ultimate fighting with Jon Favreau. They asked if Bruce was available to play himself, the UFC ring announcer. Without hesitation, Bruce accepted the opportunity and was featured on episode 24 titled, The One with the Ultimate Fighting Champion. After that, Bruce started to regularly feature in the UFC and within his first few years in the promotion, he had his own catchphrase. It's time. Uh, no, I did not do that right. How did you come up with it's time? I would open the show and go, it's time. Week in and week out, Buffer started roaring inside the octagon in his tailor-made suits. His energy, his passion for the sport, and his gifted ability to fuel the fire under battle-ready fighters took his popularity through the roof. Every time Bruce steps inside the octagon, he brings something new but he often saves his best for monumental UFC events like UFC 100, where his 360 degree spin broke the internet as well as tore his knee for the first time in his career. The second time he damaged his knee was during introductions of George St. Pierre and Jake Shields before their welterweight title clash in Canada. The event was special as 50,000 people were in attendance and each and every single one of them marked the start of the fight by saying, it's time along with Buffer. Nobody knew Buffer had torn his ECL while introducing GSP and despite the pain and agony of his injury, he finished the job before limping out of the cage. On both occasions, Buffer feared that his career was going to end, but it's been 13 years since and he's still going strong. Even outside of the octagon, Bruce had enough charisma and cojones to impress Dana White. When the ring announcer threw down with a professional MMA fighter in an elevator. The story of Bruce Buffer's fight with Frank Trigg is one of the most iconic tales in the world of mixed martial arts. The altercation reportedly started when Trigg karate chopped Buffer in the neck after a comment about Dana White's watch. Buffer retaliated with punches, kickstarting a bloody brawl that lasted for half a minute. Both men exchanged blows until the elevator doors opened. Buffer suffered worse injuries including a slice open hand and had to be transported to the hospital for stitches. The duel was violent and bloody, yet Dana was happy to find out that his announcer was just as tough as any fighter on his roster. The UFC president only has nice things to say about Buffer. He thinks the charismatic ring announcer style, presentation, and delivery and everything he does has reached mastery. Right now, he's the absolute best in the world and there's nobody better than him. Not even his elder brother, idol, and mentor. Not only Dana, Joe Rogan feels the same way. Dana attributes Buffer's growing legend to his willingness to follow instruction years ago and significantly shorten his introductions. According to White, when he took over the production, some staff members resisted his direction and were quickly replaced. However, Buffer was different. 
He adapted to White's vision and has since perfected his style. Now, after more than two decades, he's the veteran voice of the Octagon, whose fame and cultural impact may have eclipsed that of his brothers, which presents both advantages and challenges for the UFC. While the organization would prefer the spotlight to focus primarily on its fighters rather than on personalities like Buffer, you just can't keep him out of the game, especially when his energy is often through the roof. Even UFC fans love the old man to bits because deep down, they know he's irreplaceable. When you talk about fighters, you have tons of goats in the discussion. You have John Jones, GSP, Anderson Silva, Demetrius Johnson, and the list goes on and on. But when it comes to UFC ring announcers, there's only one man fans want to see, and that's Bruce Buffer. That's the kind of impact Buffer has on the sport, and in all honesty, the fight game won't be the same when he says goodbye. The good thing is, he isn't going away anytime soon. Buffer is 66 years old right now, and he plans on being part of the fight game for the next 25 years. Realistically, he said 10 years, but you never know. The man is still in great shape and still has more energy than his younger counterparts. He is a living legend in combat sports. Outside of fighting though, he only ever had one dream and he fulfilled it as well in early 2024. His dream was to show his buzzing vocals at the Super Bowl and he did exactly that as he played a pivotal role in setting the stage for the event's opening night festivities. Buffer introduced both competing teams, the defending champions Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, and his signature delivery added an extra layer of excitement to the spectacle. Is Bruce Buffer the greatest ring announcer of all time? Let us know down below, comment if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.